folks, and welcome back to another lesson. This one is going out to Patreon, Simon Sove. Hope I pronounced your name right, Simon. Correct me if I'm wrong. And he wanted uh, Lady Picture Show by Stone Temple Pilots. So we're going to crack on with it. Really interesting tones in this one. I think he used um, an AC30. So I don't have one of those, but I'm going to go with a Telecaster. This is the um, Seth Backer Shoreline T. I'm also going with the Scran from Sound Lad Liverpool. It's an absolutely brilliant pedal. So I'm on bridge pickup. Let me give you my clean tone. And then with the Scran. I think it does that really, really well. It's got like a treble boost on one side and a like, all the way to fuzz on the other. There's also a rotary. I think it's got different settings throughout the tune as well, actually, because it's more pronounced and warbly in some parts than others. But I'm just going to stick with one setting. I'm using the M1 from Walrus Audio because that has a rotary setting. <laughs> for that bit after the chorus and for the solo tone i'm still using the scram but i've cranked the hp setting so that sounds like this but i'm also using the boss re2 space echo so to mimic these settings you just want a really quick single note de delay here you can hardly hear it and some reverb as well. So if you've got reverb on your amp or whatever, use that. But it just means... I think that gets pretty close to me. So let's crack on with the first riff. So that's the intro, and there are some funky chord voicings in this. It's the DeLeo brothers, man. What do you expect? So we've got a part of a, an E chord first, right? Seven, six, four. But then you've got the B and the E open. And those stay open for pretty much most of this riff. Not too difficult, but you want to get your thumb back here, right? So you can arch your hand around, you know, you don't want to be doing that. Unless you've got big hands, but I don't. So that's that chord voicing, and you're going to play... And then change. Your little finger slides down one fret, and you'll see Dean do that. Here, I wasn't sure what was going on. He's either playing 6-4... And that next string gets muted by his first finger. And then the B and the E are open. That still sounds good. Or... If you can flatten that finger, and then if you arch your finger around... I'm actually playing 74400 there, okay? Much trickier to do. Um, and if you find it easy to just go... And you miss it, right? It's not going to sound that radically different. The change is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So you get. And that's just one bar. Then you go to an A chord. And again, it's debatable whether he's doing seven, six, five here with just the E string open or whether he's just abandoning in his first finger and playing zero seven six zero zero right and that rhythm is down 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 up down up okay place that in the verse as well right so if you've learnt that bit you already know two sections of the song the second half of the intro, though, which does get repeated after each chorus as well, goes like this. And then back around, right? So here you've got the same first two chords. Then you're going to go to this. Five, four, six, zero, zero, right? I think it's a D major seven voicing, but obviously you've got the B and the E open. Not 
terribly difficult to play because you're going to basically go for like the beginnings of a G chord, if you like, and then put your little finger on the sixth fret on the G string. But again, thumb back here. And that's just down, 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 down. So that's the intro. Let's play it once more around slowly and we'll move on. Three, four. And that's that. Then you go into the verse, which is, again, this part. Next riff goes like this. Then it repeats the first three bars. And then you go back into this. The intro section again, okay, but with some some effects. So we're on the ninth fret here, which is a C sharp nine, and the rhythm for this first three uh, bars is. So you alternate between a staccato eighth note at the beginning and a normal one, right? Like that, okay, and then you move that shape up. Easiest way to jump up with those, you don't need to move even this finger really, you could leave that where it is and just jump these two up, okay? And just try not to hit that, right, when you're strumming. Then you go down to the seventh fret. Then one guitar plays this. Right, that's your E chord and then some sort of diminished chord. But if you add your rotary at this point, you've got and it arpeggiates that exact same chord shape. And the easiest way to transition between the two is think of this like a C shape. It is a C shape, but we're going to flatten our first finger here, right, to cover the top sort of four strings. And then we've got take these two fingers off, slide your a uh, little finger down one fret, and then you reapply the second finger on the fifth fret. On the G string, okay? So that again, slowly. Okay, then as I say, round this again. you're into the intro section but again it's with this rotary tone so it goes <laughs> only difference there is the rhythm for that um that d major seven shape <laughs> One, two, three, one, one, two, three, four. Okay, so you just do two downstrokes for that. Round the verse and the chorus again. After the second chorus, you're going to go back into this part, but you play three times round this. And then the fourth time, you're going to play. Okay. There's an overdubbed bend as well, um, which goes. And then a rest for a bar, right? That goes around four times. And then you're into the solo. Solo all the way through goes like this.
So the first part is a series of bends you're going to play. That's the first part. So you've got... I would probably use my first and third finger for the first two. And I'm bending down, right? Then I would use my third finger on the 11th fret and bend that up. And then the 12th fret on my little finger. And then you've got these additional bends. Then there's some cool little runs. They're not too fast, but they're um, very lovely. So you've got that lovely little run, okay? So let's take that one step at a time. So the first part is... So that is a little hammer on, pull off and slide. And you pick that last tenth fret, right? So that's the first part. Then you're going to do a slide from the ninth to the seventh. So that's your first finger sliding down. And then your third finger gets that ninth fret there. But you, you hang on and do a little bend and release. Just a half step bend. And then you continue it with... That's um, just seven, nine, seven, down to five, right? But then you do this. Little staccato note and a pull off, seven to five, okay? Then you do this. Got a little country bend there, right? So I'm bending up full the seventh fret there on the B and then my little finger tucks in to get the seventh fret on the E string, okay? So. The whole run slowly would be from the bends. Then the next part is this. This starts on the 16th note before the first beat, so it's. And then the 16th note on the B string. That's the first note of the uh, next bar, okay? So the whole phrase would be three, four. <laughs> Sounds like there's a lot more going on than there is. Um, it's actually two almost re identical repeating bars. You've got... So you're basically going to play the 12th note every um, kind of second note, but you're going to play and the last one you just hold out for an 8th note. So that is it. I'll do that once more slowly. Three, four. Okay, great fun. And you get some really nice... You know, you get some really nice overtones happening just as they're um, slowly mingling into each other. Then you've got this last run which goes... And that's the end of the solo. So that is a bend classic stuff really on the 11th fret. So that's very bluesy run, slowly. Then you've got so pull off there. And then a bit of Jimi Hendrix stuff. So the whole phrase slowly. Three, four. Then you're into triplets. With 
this phrase at the end. So two bends on the 14th fret. Bend and release. And a pull off. With that rhythm, right? And that just rings out for an extra bar. Round the verse and chorus again. Then you've just got this, I think, is the outro, which goes. finish on that chord. Job done. Hope you enjoyed that one. See you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.